Ah, uh, Legion and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi and today we're gonna do our EU4 starting moves guide for Genoa. In this guide we'll be discussing the diplomacy and trade, missions, Ottoman war, later expansion and the ideas that you should go for. Before we start the video I'd appreciate it if you left a like, commented and subscribed as well as left the bell button on. If we get this video to a thousand likes then I am gonna do a giveaway for an EU4 DLC or the base game if you don't have it. And the way that I normally choose the winner for these giveaways is I select from the comments section a winner so do remember to comment as well as like the video. When discussing the rivals that you should go for as the Genoese, you always go ahead and pick the Byzantines and Milan as your first two rivals and as your third rival it really depends on how the alliances will start off in the Italian peninsula. If you have a chance at attacking Florence then I would recommend that you take this chance from the beginning so that you get them out of the way and you start with a strong basis in the Genoese trade area but if it is not possible to attack Florence then I recommend that you go ahead and rival the Crimeans. As such, wait until the 11th of December before you choose your third rival. When it comes to alliances, go ahead and ally the Venetians if you have them available as an option, as you will be fighting the Ottomans early on in the game and the Venetians will prove quite useful against the Ottomans. If they are not available, then you can also start improving relations with Hungary, Austria and even Poland sometimes can ally you. One nation that I have always seen ally you is France after you've gained a few more nations within your trade league. Speaking of the trade league, start off by inviting the knights in the trade league so that they don't join the Venetian trade league and also invite the nations of Luca and Saluzzo which almost always will be joining your trade league. One more thing to do is set the protect trade edict in your main state of Liguria as one of your first missions is going to be the Genoese trade dominance for which you need to have 60 trade power in Genoa and you start off with 52 so you just need to give the edict and you can do the mission after you've played for one day. This mission gives us claims on Tunisia, Pisa, Nizza, Luca. So we now have claims on the whole area around us and also on the nation of Tunis. Even though Savoy has one of your claims, it is recommended that you ally Savoy at the start because almost always the Milanese will rival you and having Savoy as an ally will deter the Milanese from attacking you. Also rivaling back me Milan means that you get a higher chance at allying Venice which is good at the start although later down the line we will have Venice as one of our main rivals. Before the first month finishes do make sure that you start making a spy network in Byzantium as we will be attacking them before the Ottomans get a chance to attack them and we will also be recruiting the free company but not right now we will get them a few months afterwards otherwise we'd be wasting the money early on in the game. You also should get some decent advisors, a diplomatic reputation or a trade efficiency level 1 advisor is highly recommended as is a morale of armies or a discipline level 1 advisor and a national tax or even production efficiency for your admin is quite good. If you want to go orthodox you should also start by sending a missionary in one of these three provinces or even in Kaffa itself until you have the rebels trigger and then let the rebels convert your whole country to orthodox so that you can switch to the best religion in the game. Getting a diplo reputation advisor means that you're gonna get a lot more alliance options even Bohemia would be willing to ally you and I'm pretty sure even Austria is very close to joining you as is the Hungarians. Take note when choosing alliances of the current rivalries between these nations. So for example if you want to go for Austria I don't recommend that you ally Bohemia as well as they are rivaled and same thing if you do go for France do not recommend allying the Austrians at the same time. A good combination would actually be France and Bohemia though so if you get these two nations you are more than guaranteed to win your war against the Ottomans quite easily. The Genoese start off with three merchants one of them is transferring trade from Valencia the other one from the Alexandrian trade node and the third one is collecting in the Crimea trade node keep them like this this is actually the most optimal way of using your merchants. The Genoese mission tree is actually quite easily to access but it is not anything amazing to be honest it gives you a lot of mercantilism and some claims around that being said however it is split in basically three sides the left side of the mission tree which as I previously mentioned you need to have 60 trade power in Genoa which you can get from the beginning will give you permanent claims on Pisa, Nizza, Luca, as well as the Tunisian area and that will be one of our first expansions after pulverizing Pisa apparently and taking the other couple of provinces here you get a hundred admin points and you also get a thousand sailors furthermore having a bigger fleet than Aragon means that you are going to get a permanent claim on the west 
western Mediterranean islands, that means the Balearic Islands as well as Sardinia. And seizing the whole of Sardinia gives you more claims on Valencia as well as the island of Sicily. The conquest of Tunisia gives you a tumor cannibalism and after you've done that one and you have the highest amount of trade power in the Tunisian trade note, you get more claims on the Morocco as well as the Delta area. That means the northern part of Morocco and the northern part of the Mamluks here. Getting a foothold in the Mamluks is going to give you another two mercantilism and some trade efficiency for a while, whilst getting a hold on one province from Morocco gives you even more mercantilism and claims on the southern part of Spain. Getting the southern part of Spain gives you even more claims and two mercantilism. The central part of the mission tree revolves around you being a trade league and developing your nation a bit. Having six members as part of your trade league means that you get trade efficiency and diplo rep for 20 years, making sure that none of your surrounding Italian nations have a bigger army than you or having them as an ally means you get one stability and an admiral and after you've enacted your golden age you get two base tax in Genoa as well as some buffs for 20 years. The only permanent modifier until the end of the game that Genoa has is the Mari Nostrum where you need to have six centers of trade within the coastline of the Mediterranean belonging to you will give you until the end of the game morale of navies plus five, naval maintenance minus five percent and yearly navy tradition plus 0.5. On the right hand side of the mission tree, resolving the Shadow Kingdom situation basically with the outcomes of either allying the Austrians or leaving the HRE gives you a permanent claim on Ferrara. Taking over Ferrara gives you a mercantilism and a permanent claim on the Dalmatia area which belongs to Venice at this point and Ragusa. Having a bigger fleet than Venice gives you permanent claims on the Venetian area and taking care of Venice gives you more prestige and trade power with the last mission where you need to have 65% trade power in both the Genoan and Venice trade notes gives you two base production in Genoa. You also have the option after taking Ragusa to get claims on the Huda Vendigar and Trace areas, basically the home site here of the Ottomans. After you secure the Bosphorus and the Sea of Mamra, you get two more mercantilism and ship cost minus 33%. As expected, if you do get a few more nations in your trade league, the French will decide to ally you and you should definitely go for this alliance. It also makes as well with the Bohemian Alliance. So if you get both Bohemia and France, what we just need to do next is make sure that we get attacked by the Ottomans and that is the easiest thing to do in this game. In order to finish the second mission here, which requires that you have six members in your trade league, you're going to have to invite nations around you that are in the Venetian trade node. And to do that, you need to have 1% of that trade node. Now to cheese this, what we're going to do is we're going to send our six light ships to protect trade in the Venetian trade node, which is going to give us 1% of that trade node. And as such, we can invite the nations of Mantua as well as Bologna into our trade league, which means that we can do the second mission here. And doing the third mission is going to be quite easy also. We simply need to recruit a few more units. Before the end of 1445, your trade league should be absolutely massive. You're going to have the Knights, Mantua, Siena, Luca, Theodoro, Bologna, and Saluzzo in the trade league. And you should have the alliances with France, Bohemia, and Savoy, which means that you are an absolute beast and that the war against the Byzantines is not going to be an issue as well as the war against the Ottomans to follow. Do make sure that you scout out the situation in Italy. As I previously mentioned, there is a pretty high chance that Florence doesn't get any alliances like they didn't get in my game or that they don't get any significant alliances, in which case I recommend that you rival Florence first before the Crimeans and that you declare your war against them for this one province of Pisa that you have and that you want to take your army should be 1000 units bigger than Florence's army but just in case I recommend that you take a loan and that you merc up it is great to get the early mercenaries since you're gonna need the free company in your wars against Byzantium anyway before you peace out Florence I recommend that you get your claim on Byzantium and that you attack them right after you get that claim otherwise you're gonna have an issue as the Emperor himself will ask you for unlawful territory and you're gonna get really bad relations with everyone around you so use your claim wisely and go ahead and attack the Byzantines and right after you've attacked the Byzantines go right ahead 
and peace out Florence. If you ally the French, there's also a pretty big chance that you will already be in a war against the English that the French likely will be winning. But in case you are not allied to the French, do remember to attack the Byzantines before you peace out Florence, otherwise you're going to end up with pretty bad relations. From Florence, what we want is the city of Pisa, ask for trade power and humiliation as well as all the money that we can possibly get so that we can pay off our loans. You most likely will have just one loan, but you might also have more loans depending on how long it took you to siege down Firenze. Start by lowering your war exhaustion before you core up the city of Pisa. And if you are in the war against the English, do not worry, the French will deal with this war themselves, you don't need to get involved in it. Whenever you are in the war against the Byzantines, you should focus on the southern parts first before advancing into the north. And remember to keep your mercenary units and your main army together, otherwise you might get stack wiped. After you fully siege down the Byzantines, do not do anything, you want to wait until the Ottomans actually attack the Byzantines and after they've attacked them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna vassalize the Byzantines and we're gonna take directly the province of Athens and feed it back to the Byzantines as they have a core on it, as well as we're gonna ask for as much money as we can get from them. Do remember that you likely will still be at war with the Serbians, but don't worry, the Ottomans will take care of the Serbians for us. Also remember to make a full state out of the city of Pisa and do the same thing where you give the protect trade edict to both Pisa and Corsica so that you can increase the amount of trade power that you have in the Genoa trade node. Around 42% should be accurate around this time. And make sure that you send a merchant to collect in the Venice trade node as your trade ships will definitely boost your presence there. I recommend switching the Valencia trade node guy into the Venice one as Valencia automatically will only transfer into the Genoa trade node anyway. This will definitely boost your trade presence and your trade income should get around 9 to 10 ducats in this early age. You also should be able to get the first couple of technologies around this time and the admin one will follow suit. You have a bit less admin because you took the city of Pisa and if you're lucky once Renaissance spawns you might even get it in Genoa as it is one of the most important cities in Italy and it is basically in Italy that Renaissance will spawn. Once you get the cash for it also build in Genoa a marketplace that will boost up the trade power even more and then later on you can build another one in Pisa and in Azov. There is also a chance that the Ottomans are going to be attacking Kandar first before they attack Byzantium so if that's the case it is up to you how long you want to wait for the Byzantines to get attacked by the Ottomans because it can be a few years and sometimes it's not worth waiting for that long if you don't want to wait you can just peace out and have them as a vassal and use their cores on the Ottomans to attack the Ottomans later on however if you wait and you get attacked then you're gonna be able to rely on the Bohemians and the French French to help you out against the Ottomans, so it is definitely worth waiting for a bit longer. Go ahead and rush for the Tech 4 admin whenever you get it, so you get ahead of time production efficiency plus 20%. And don't forget to increase your trade presence by building three more light ships from the start, which you can put in the Venetian trade node. If you're patient enough, eventually they will declare war on the Byzantines, and once that happens, go ahead and vassalize the Byzantines. This means that you can call in as a defensive war because it is your vassal that got attacked. All of your amazing allies. That means France can be called in, Bohemia and Savoy can also be called in. And together you make the Powerpuff Girls or the absolutely kebab remove team. Not to mention the Serbians also join in on your side. Be very careful however by the time that the allies are going to reach the uh, area of the Balkans. It's going to take a while so you will have to fight by yourself. What I recommend is that you use your superior fleet combined fleet to keep the Ottomans at bay and try to avoid direct engagements unless you want to recruit a lot of mercenary units and use those in order to fight off the Ottomans. One thing to mention about the war is that a lot of the times your vassals will not instantly attack the Ottomans because they don't have military access and they're not willing to get that military access so you will have to be the one that gets the military access. You likely will have to ask Switzerland, Three Leagues, Austria and Hungary for military access so you have a connection between their homelands and the Ottoman lands. That means you're going to be over your diplo slots here for a while but it is okay as it's going to help you beat up the Ottomans quite easily in the early game. Whenever you finish sieging down the Ottomans and you're ready to peace them out, I recommend that you give back most of your cores to your Byzantine vassal, but not all of them. 
Now, you should not give back Adirn as the Ottomans are going to keep Adirn as a capital. So in the second war against the Ottomans, it's going to be a lot easier getting war score as their capital is basically surrounded by your provinces. You should also take the province of Ohri for yourself as you can release the nation of Bulgaria from this one province. And I also recommend that you take the province of Kanik as you want a province here to border Trebizond since you can afterwards either make Trebizond join your trade league or you can just annex them yourself which is going to give you access to the Georgian land also. If you cannot take Ohri because for example Serbia was faster and they managed to take Ohri then you can also take any of the other Bulgarian cultured provinces that has a core of Bulgaria and release that nation from that other province. After piecing out Remember to cancel all of the military accesses that you have around this area such as the one in Hungary and so on so that you stop bleeding diplomatic points. Also remember to get Crimea as your next rival as we are going to be attacking Crimea. In the meanwhile, you should have gotten some claims on the Crimeans, especially on Crimea itself and as many of the other provinces that you can get claims on before you can attack. Remember to court Kanik and give the province of Athens to the Byzantines as they have a core on it, so there's no need for you to actually core it yourself. Pay off the debt they might have so that you lower their liberty desire and then afterwards you can start improving relations with them also. After your first war against the Ottomans, later expansion should include include the areas of Crimea as well as the area of Tunisia which will be our foothold in North Africa from where we will be expanding into the other areas to the west as well as to the east. After you take over the Tunis area you're gonna get claims on the Delta and I recommend that you do go ahead and take the Delta since Alexandria itself has a lot of trade power in this area as does Rashid and Dumiat. Don't be afraid to keep on including nations in your trade league. Once you have Kanik you're gonna be able to include nations in this area that are still OPMs in your trade league such as Emirati which joined our trade league and you also should have access to Cyprus as such by this point we now have nine members in the trade league which is considerably OP since nobody will ever want to attack us now you also have a free hand in attacking Circassia and the Georgian minor nations and if you get a chance I recommend that you attack Aragon and Naples whenever they get their independence as well as Epirus to feed back the course to Byzantium before you integrate them fully the first idea group that I recommend you take as Genoa is trade ideas as you are a trade power and you're going to need to rely on your trade economy more than anything else. Going for trade ideas you're going to get an extra three merchants once you fill up the whole idea set as well as get extra trade range, trade power, trade efficiency, trade steering plus 25% and caravan power. As a second idea it really obviously depends whether you have admin or military points but most likely you will have military points and if that is the case go for quantity ideas which together with trade idea gives you a goods produce modifier of plus 20 percent thus increasing your economy considerably as your third idea i recommend that you go for religious ideas seeing as you are basically going to be fighting muslims orthodox catholics pretty much every other religion and once the reformation strikes i also recommend that you go reformed or if you want to go orthodox from the start as i said at the beginning of the video that is probably the best option whichever you you do go you're always gonna have other nations to declare your Deus Vult CB on. Taking religious ideas also mixes super well with trade ideas as well as quantity ideas. You can get another plus 10% goods produce modifier as well as missionary strength plus one from mixing with trade ideas and mixing it with quantity gives you plus 10 morale of armies for your armies which is super good. Later ideas if you like you should also go for plutocratic ideas that boost up your economy as as well as your army a lot. You get another 25 caravan power, another 20% manpower recovery speed, plus one merchants, plus 10 morale of armies, and 10 goods produce modifier. And if you mix this in with trade, you get one more merchant. So you definitely will have an insanely high amount of merchants to use around the Mediterranean. If you go orthodox, it's also going to be super easy to form the Italian nation as you just need three more cores in the Italian peninsula from Rome, Firenze, and Milano. And these 
these are easy to get after you get a bit bigger and with these three cities you can form Italy once you have admin tech 10 and up to 20 provinces within the Italian region so that's going to be easy to get after you've taken all of Naples and Sardinia from the Aragonese as well as Sicily later on. Don't recommend going too much into the northern parts at the start because they are quite high dev and quite high aggressive expansion as such is not really worth it. In fact expanding in this area is probably good after the Shadow Kingdom has triggered but even then it's going to be a lot of aggressive expansion. The best way to play as Genoa is to alternate between aggressive expansion regions, cultures and religions. What that means is that you can attack a Muslim nation, wait for the AE to go down, whilst you're waiting you can attack a Catholic nation or an Orthodox nation and rinse and repeat. As such you can pretty much always be at war without having to worry too much about aggressive expansion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe as well as leave the bell button on to get notified whenever I release a new guide or a video. I also want to give a very big shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much guys for all of your support on Patreon and on YouTube. It really means the world to me that you are supporting me like this. And if anybody else is interested in joining my patrons or my channel members, then you can find the links in the description. Until the next one, have a great day everyone.